everyone, this is three questions with Lisa Azevedo. I get it? Was that good? Got it. Yep, you got it. All right. Well, hey, I am so honored to actually uh, be able to connect with Lisa. She's the interim superintendent at Bellflower, which I will be joining you all in August. I am so pumped. Uh, I am way more pumped after talking to you because I can just feel how much pride you have. Uh, not only the school district, but the community. Like, it is a pretty cool place. And some of the stuff that you were telling me, I, I almost don't believe you. <laughs> Oh, no, it's true. Absolutely. It's a great place to be. Yeah, like it is really, really cool. And, you know, Lisa, I, I try to talk. This is Southern California, so I started trying to talk basketball. Lisa's not basketball, and I'm like, nobody listens to me when I talk basketball anyway. <laughs> so so you're welcome, everybody, from Lisa, for me not talking about basketball this whole episode. But uh, very cool. And we have actually a really good fine arts connection. So I am really excited to kind of dig into... Um, some of the things going on at Bellflower, some of the things that you do, some of the things in your career. Before we kind of get into it and we talk about um, some of the incredible things that are happening in Bellflower, I actually want to hear about some of your inspiration, some of the things that really inspired you. So I know that you, when we were talking, you have done like a million different jobs. So I know you've, I think you're 30 years in the profession. So you were, you know, teacher, middle school, elementary, high school, vice principal, assistant principal. You did incredible work with CTE. So when you think of a teacher who really inspired you, whether it's someone you worked with, someone who taught you, who's someone you think of and why? So I actually have two people that would come to mind. Uh, first is actually my mother. Um, she was a elementary teacher in Long Beach Unified. And so of course she was my first teacher. She was my mom and she taught me at home before I even went to school. Um, but once I arrived in that educational environment, I specifically remember my first grade teacher. Her name was Miss Navarette. I don't know her first name, but I remember her as Miss Navarette. Uh, first grade, super positive, um, very kind. I was a very, very shy student. And she really worked with me to kind of talk and um, engage with the other students and learn how to kind of speak up for myself and for others. I was very quiet. so. I loved her. I remember that special relationship with her. I remember, you know, back in the day, a while ago, uh, teachers would come and visit your home. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day she came over and had lunch with my mom. And I remember playing in the backyard. I have a swing set and I was out there playing and my teacher and my mom are having lunch together. Just a really neat relationship. Um, And I appreciate that. I appreciate you know, the relationship between a family, the community, a teacher and a student, it means a lot when they're all working together for the success of that child. And that meant a lot to me. All right. We're going to give a double shout out to your mom and Miss Navarette. We don't know. So I love it. The, you know, you know, I was like thinking about this and it is amazing to think that you were shy, didn't speak up, you're, and then you have a grade one teacher and now you're superintendent. Like, very yeah, shy like, child like that is absolutely amazing because like whether you're shy or not you have no choice anymore <laughs> right you're right, shy right. anymore right so you're super right. and so you think about even at the earliest of ages how much of our path um is determined by having a great teacher and someone who you know so that's just 100 that, like, that's amazing that's an amazing story I, like actually i got goosebumps when you talked about that so that, that that's, that's so cool I was just thinking about you know, if you no, I don't, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure you would have gone to great things, but I don't know if you'd be a superintendent if you didn't have the grade one teacher. Right. And, you know, yeah. and too, right. Like, it goes to show. Them. Yeah. It goes to show how important that relationship is that that teacher has with that student. You never really know how you're touching the life of that student until they've grown up and come back. Miss Navarrette probably doesn't know that story. She probably doesn't even know that I remember her. Um, but that's the beauty of teaching. You're making a difference in the life of children, whether you realize that or not. And sometimes that impact is really great. You're not even sure how big that is. Well, Hey, anyone listening to this right now, if you know, Miss Navarrette, make sure she gets this podcast. Cause I think that would be really, really cool. Make sure at least her family great. gets it too. So I'm sure, you know, the weird thing I'm telling you, this is, I actually talked about my teachers the first time I did this podcast. And within 24 hours, everyone I mentioned actually reached out to me. I had, and I never oh. sent it to them. So like, you never know. So that'd be, that would be that amazing. Would, I would love that. That'd be so cool. So, all right. So next question. Now I know you've been an administrator at very different levels, different programs and now superintendent, but you, you, you know, you've, you've 
did a, a what was it was it like a ceo of a cte pro like i know it's not called yes. like cte or something different but you've had very different roles so i know you've not only been an administrator but you've worked with some incredible administrators and i'm sure you had some as a kid but when you think of a great administrator uh, whether it's someone you worked with someone you had as a, a student who someone you think of and why uh, first person that comes to mind is Dr. Ed Shaw. So he was my mentor. Um, I was a teacher here in Belfar Unified, worked at Mayfair. I was a middle school teacher. And I was fortunate enough to apply for a, a special position to work on a particular program. And Dr. Shaw happened to be the supervisor of that program. He was the assistant superintendent at the time. And he was a great individual. He was a good person hard worker, dedicated to the students. Every decision he made was made in the best interest of those students. And really for the lifetime that he was here in our district, he was my mentor. He was my go-to person. In any job that I had, he was the person that I would call on for advice. I learned a lot from him. Very yeah. quiet man again, Yeah, quiet person because he was a very dedicated listener. He was very thoughtful about what he did. So he was always very clear about his decisions, very clear about communication, but was very thoughtful and always listened to those around before making a decision. And I really appreciate that about him. Dr. Shaw, listen, get that little shout out. There's, there's, there's a couple of things you said. And one of them that actually really stuck out to me. Um, we always think of superintendents as like the person in the front who's like really, you know, like talks all the time and things like that too. And um, I've really learned over the years um, that sometimes when you're very thoughtful of when you talk, that your words carry more weight. But when you talk all the time, people just, <laughs> they, don't, they don't listen to you eventually. Yeah. So that, yeah. that, that was really uh, important to me. The, the other thing that you, one of the first things you mentioned um, was the importance of character. And um, there is actually like, there's a couple stories that I, I think about with this too, is um, when you're actually getting people to try new things and that are, that are uncomfortable, mm -hmm. if they don't like who you are, they don't want to be associated with doing uncomfortable things. I know that's like a weird thing, but like, cause they, cause they know it's like, Hey, you're asking me to do this, but I don't want to be associated with you. <laughs> so mm -hmm. like, you mentioned, and I've been, I've been really thinking about that a lot lately. There's some like really great stories um, about that, but I just, that stuck out to me that you mentioned that right away because um, whether he had the best advice, if he had amazing advice, but you didn't think he was a good person, you probably wouldn't listen. So I, yeah. I, I think that's a really uh, important point. So, you know, and not, I think we all can get better as human beings, but that, that, that has stuck out to you is something that's really meaningful. All right. So you are, 30 years into the profession, right? And I know that if you went back, there's I, one of the things I really appreciate about you and I, I, I really love is you're all, you can tell how reflective you are um, and really kind of, when we had a conversation prior to this, one of the things is that you're, you, I could tell you're always trying to learn from your community, um, learn to be better, uh, which I think sometimes a superintendent, it has this kind of mentality is like, okay, hey, I'm the boss. Right. But you're like really kind of like I, I felt the real focus on servant leadership, learning from your community, yes. uh, always trying to do whatever you can to help people. So I know that if you went back to your first year, there's things that uh, of teaching you would totally maybe change, think differently about. So if you go back to your very first year of teaching and, and talk to Lisa, then what advice would you give? I would say to enjoy what you're doing a little bit more and not worry so much about perfection. I think when you're a new teacher, you're so worried about doing everything right. Everything has to be right to the best of your ability. I would still encourage that first year teacher, do it to the best of your ability, but hold on for just a second and realize that teaching is a lifelong learning experience. You learn by doing just like the students do. So give yourself a little bit of grace realize that things are not going to be perfect all the time. You're going to have great days and you're going to have maybe some days that were a challenge. And that's, that's part of the position and know that that's okay. You're not expected to be perfect all the time, but know that as you're building your skill set and as you're learning how to work with students and all of their different needs and all the, their different skills that they may have, it's teaching you 
lots of little components along the way. And it helps build you and your career um, beyond the classroom if you choose to do that, or it helps you continue to be that best teacher as you move forward in that career. So, you know, what's interesting is that you're giving yourself this advice in your first year, but you're living it because before we got on the podcast, you told me you were a nervous wreck about doing this. Oh yeah, this is not my thing. <laughs> and you're, and you're doing amazing. And if it's oh, actually like, you. <laughs> it, it, you're actually like anyone who's listening to this, there's no way if you're like, that's Lisa's first time on a podcast ever. Right. Oh and yeah. It's Lisa's first time. <laughs> so I, I love this. I, I absolutely love this because you gave advice that you're, you're basically like saying like, Hey, don't focus on perfection, like show up, show up and you'll learn through the process. And you know, you show up in your, and, and I think a lot of times if you show up every day, you might not focus on perfection, but you're probably doing way better than you expected, which is kind of what's and happening. I'll so let me clarify two things. Number one, I've been on a recorded conversation before. So I have done that. Okay. Never done like a live podcast. That is not. Oh, it's not um, live. Trust me. If we screw this okay. up, <laughs> we can record it. Okay. So I've done like a recording before for a presentation. Yeah. I've done that. Yeah. And I was five when I started working, you know, five plus 30, we're still 35, right? We're still in a good spot. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. So yeah. You're very, very young superintendent. All right. So yes, Lisa, yes. I, I love talking to you. Uh, I have like really been honored to connect not only with you, but members of your community too. Um, I know I have uh, other actually people from your district that are going to be on my podcast. We didn't even talk about that, but maybe it'll be a little bit nice. surprised here. Nice. So yeah, so I'm like learning from you, but I'm excited to uh, meet you in person, join you all, Beth, Bellflower. Everyone, make sure you connect with Lisa. And thank you so much, Lisa, for being on the podcast. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day.